you doing? Great. Great. Wow. Without realizing we are now in the end of the 2018. Like this is the last Sunday that we can, you know, we believe that more Sundays is going to come 2019, but this is something special that we want to treasure. Um, that right now we give thanks to God. This is really real, the end of 2018. Tomorrow is going to be the last day. Are you ready to enter in the new year? Amen. Raise your hand if you are ready. Hallelujah. All right. Um, me and Carvin, we just uh, got married like about like a month ago. And, you know, real during this time, you know, things are happens, especially, you know, already the one who already married, <laughs> like, you know, things are happen, including moving out. And um, I've been living in the previous place for four years. And can you imagine like how much stuff that I have in my closet, in my bedroom, and also in my kitchen? I have like my book supplies. I have, I have my books, uh, school, art supplies, and everything from my school. I have my clothes, my bags, and my shoes. And the thing is, I have to move that into the new place, which is called Arvin Place. And it was so painful for me because I, I know that we have a very limited space. We cannot like move everything from my place to his place. I have to sort, I have to filter the thing that is actually important and necessary, and I have to let go. Well, for me, it's hard because I'm not the type of person who likes to keep everything. And it's hard because some of them, it has some memories. Some of them, it's maybe I thought it's going to be useful for future. But in fact, I really never really use it in the future. But here's the thing that sometimes we also have the same thing. We have junk in our life. We have excess baggage in our life that we never really, you know, check that actually we don't need it, right? We don't need it in our lives and we have to let go some of them so we can enter the new year, we can enter the purpose that God has designated for us, amen? And are you ready to learning what, uh, how to let go all of the junk, all of the excess baggage uh, this morning, amen? And before we, we uh, go further, I, I will talk today about leave the baggage behind. We are going to learn about what is considered as the excess baggage. Second, like um, why we need to leave it. And the third, how we overcome, how we want to, how we surrender all of this baggage in our lives. First, we are going to learn about what is considered as an excess baggage. I have two points. The first one is, Old mindset. Say it with me, old mindset. Old mindset. Let's us uh, open up together in Exodus 14, verse 11 to 15. Exodus 14, verse 11 to 15. Uh, let's we read uh, together. I'll go. I'll start with the first 11, and then you uh, with first 12, and then so on until first 15. Okay, Exodus. I'm going to start first, Exodus 14, 11 to 15. Uh, 11 to 15, yeah. Then they say to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? Why have you so dealt with us to bring us up out of Egypt? 12, 2, 3. Let us alone that we may serve the Egyptian, for it will have been better for us to serve the Egyptians that we should die in the wilderness. 13. And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. 14. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. First 15, let's read this together. One, two, three. And the Lord says to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. I want uh, to read for you in the driven translation for the first 15 
It's from the NIV translation. It says, Then the Lord says to Moses, Why are you crying out to me? Tell the Israelites to move on. We know that Israelite has been slave uh, by the Egyptian for 400 years. And it make them like, you know, the culture, they, it's like stuck in their head that they are slave. They've been like living there for, for so long and it's hard for them to, uh, you know, to, to let go that title as a slave. Not only the title, but like the way of thinking, like the, the, the perspective that they are slave. So until God tell, uh, told Moses to bring out of the Israelites to the promised land, which is the land of Canaanites. Um... We know that uh, God has prepared them to become a champion, not a slave. But the thing is, they always look back. This is the story when uh, the one that we just read, where the Israelite needs to cross the Red Sea, and the Egyptian, the 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 Roman emperor, I mean the the Egyptian catch them and then they want uh, the Israelites to come back and they'd start to complain and talk uh, talk Moses why you want us to die here isn't that a lot of graves in the is uh, Egypt why you want us to die here they're they, they are physically out from the Egypt but they're mentally their mental it's still there Physically out, but their mental is still there. They are always looking back. The chapter, like the book of Exodus, it's actually like summarized right about Israelite depart from the Egypt. The word is from the Greek word exodus. Exodus means exit. If you see like, you know, there are like two exits here, means that's the place for going out from the part. Like like what I said before, Israelites, they are like physically exit from the land of Egypt, but their old mindset is still there. Let us open again in Numbers 12, uh, sorry, Numbers 14. Numbers 14, verse 2 to 3. This is the proof uh, how Israelites still have the old mindset, have their own perspective. Numbers 14, verse 2 to 3. Okay. All right. And all the children of Israel complained. See, the Israelites say again, complain against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in this wilderness. Verse 3 Why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword? that our wives and children should become victims, would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? It's not only in the book of Exodus. This is the book of Numbers. But the Israelites still think about their past. They think about like, wouldn't it not better for us to return to Egypt? If you read the whole chapter, this Numbers, it's where the Israelites were about to enter the land of Canaanites. When uh, Joshua sent the 12 uh, spies to see what is, uh, what is in the land of Canaanites, and they said, oh, all of the, the, the full of the milk and honey and everything, the, all the produce was really good, but the people there, it's big. It's like a giant. They thought, oh my God, we won't be able to defeat them. It's already like in the border. They are about to enter the land of Canaanites, but still 
They cannot move on. They fail to move on. Sometimes in our life, we also have the same thing like the Israelites. We, 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 are, we are too comfortable with our comfort zone. Then actually that comfort zone, it hinder us to enter the promised land. Just like, like this, um, this month, we are talking about the finishing race. We are talk, talking about race. Our life is like a journey. Like what, what we have right now, the journey God has prepared us to enter the promised land. But if we always look back to Egypt, look back to our old mindset, look back about uh, talking about something that it's earthly thing, we wouldn't be able to grab the kingdoms in the, our, in the front. Amen? Uh, let me tell you a story. This is about myself. Before, I mean like the, when the first time I came here, I came as a student and I had thought that, um, okay, after I graduate from school, I want to at least like work for like maybe like one or two years and then go back to build my career in Indonesia. But like God has um, told me different. It seems like different because right now, me and Corbin, we are married here. And then we, you know, I have my job here. Then I can uh, be a blessing to serve uh, here as well. And at the beginning, it's not easy for me because in my perspective, in my mindset, I, ha I want to go back to Indonesia and then build my career there. At the beginning, it's not easy. But I think it's like last year when I... Um, I had the retreat together with Pastor Jerome, and he told us that we have to surrender our rights. We have to surrender your future. And I believe I can I can just like follow my own uh, you know future. I want if I want to go back, I can just go back. But God told me different to stay here at least for for being processed and be a blessing for people here. I'm so glad that I can be a blessing, but. It's not easy to align with what God's want and what we want, right? Sometimes we want to go to the A direction, but God wants you to go to the B direction. It's not easy. That's what the first thing as considered as the access package. We still have the old life. We still, I mean, we still have the old mindset. Second, we have access baggage in our old life. I divided to two um, points what is considered as access baggage in old life. First is old lifestyle. Before I get married, of course, uh, you know, single life is different from the married life, right? We can just do whatever you want as a single. You can just go wherever you go. You can just like do whatever you want, you know. You don't think about your spouse. Like, who cares? But when, you know, there is some like old life that I can, I, like um, lifestyle that I cannot bring from the single to the married life. Like, for example, uh, I, when I cook, Sometimes you know the dishes. I can when I when I was since when I was single. I can just like put all the dishes on the sink and then not to like clean up like after like right away. I can just like do maybe it's like tomorrow. You know I don't have to do it right away. But when I married him, it's different. He likes everything clean. He likes everything, you know, not messy. So that's why I have to adjust myself how to you know do everything like clean up all my dishes after I cook. It's different. I have an old life, and then I have a new life as a wife. Same like us. Before we met Christ, we met Jesus, we must have like, you know, old life. We have all of the habits that probably like not pleased to God. And you know what? As the bride of the Christ, we have to leave all of the stuff. 
We cannot bring that kind of lifestyle to the kingdom of God. We cannot bring that kind of lifestyle to live with our groom, which is Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us open together in Luke 21, verse 34. What kind of things, earthly things, that actually we have to laugh, we have to live the old lifestyle. Luke 24, verse 21, verse 34. Let's, let, let's read out this one together, okay? One, two, three. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with carousing, drunkenness, and cares of this life, and that day come on you unexpectedly. Open up together in Galatians 5, verse, 5, verse 19 to 21. Okay, let's read this one together, okay? One, two, three. Now the works of the flesh are evidence, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice such thing will not inherit the kingdom of God. Wow. We'll not be able to inherit the kingdom of God. Isn't that our, our goal is to be with the Christ? Right? Our goal is to be with the Christ and the kingdom of God. But if we still have this kind of lifestyle, we won't be able to enter the kingdom of God. Even though we are saved by the Lord, but if we still, you know, have that kind of habits, do you think it's going to please God? No, it's not going to please, please our groom. Right? Amen? All right. So what should we do? Let's open up in Ephesians 4, verse 22 to 24. Ephesians, Ephesians, Ephesians 4, verse 22 to 24. That you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful, deceitful lust. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed to the spirit of your mind. 24. And that you put on the new man which has was created according to God. In true righteousness and holiness. We have to leave our old man. And start to use our new, new man in us. Lifestyle is our part. To be disciplined is our part. What should we do? We have to keep ourselves. We have to make ourselves, um, you know, according to God's word, according to what God wants, talking about truth. No gossip, no kepo, no ember. And the, probably it can be the way, the old, the old lifestyle is like probably the way we dressed up. Dress up politely. When we pray sometimes, God, please, like take away all the temptation for us from the devil. Or maybe we are the one who tempt all the guys. <laughs> maybe all the, for the, all the women, you know, with like certain opening. <laughs> but we have to live that old style. We have to live the party lifestyle, drunken, drunkenness. Also, we have to live the life of the being not unhealthy. That's part of the lifestyle, right? We have to be healthy to reach the pursuit, the goal that God has given to us. 
if we are if we seek we wouldn't be able to get all the blessing get all the the love of god amen have a good diet eat salad right carvin <laughs> And also, all lifestyle, we have to also can um, control our spending. I know this is really hard for all the women. If you see, you know, it's, even though it's like only window display, it's like calling your name. Come on, so so come. It's really hard. But we have to control all of the spending. If it's like too much, it's not good. Right? That's the old life old lifestyle that we have to live second past relationship can you imagine if uh when i got married and then i moved to quarfin's place i put uh like all of the pictures of my ex-boyfriend even though i don't have one <laughs> can you imagine you 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 with your spouse, you know, you put all of your ex-boyfriend or your ex-girlfriend or your favorite, you know, artist, not your pictures of uh, the picture of your husband, maybe, or your boyfriend. <laughs> Can you imagine how hurt they're feeling, you know? And then, you know, sometimes we also, you know, with the past relationship, we still bring all the baggage to the current relationship. We still talk about our ex, we compare them with, with, you know, with your boyfriend right now or your husband or even, you know, sometimes you also still keep all the, the stuff that they give to you. Oh, I don't want to let go of this. This is pretty. They give me this bag. They give me, you know, this maybe necklace. I don't want to let go of this. But I tell you something this morning. Those are all the ex baggage that you don't want to bring. And you know what? If you still bring all of those, there will be cost for you to, to pay, right? You never know. Maybe because of that, your, you and your husband, maybe you and your boyfriend can fight because of that, right? You have to let go. You have to throw that away. Because that is actually hurt your spouse including God if we still have past relationship you know before God before Christ maybe you still bring you know you still um, worship like other than God like idolatry you know you still believe in the fortune teller it's actually something that hurts God's feeling right it's your past relationship. Maybe you used to uh, believe in statue. You, you used to believe in the, you know, in tree. Maybe, I don't know. But that's all your past. You cannot bring all of those in the relationship with Christ. Your past relationship, it can be bitterness, disappointment, loneliness. Maybe you disappoint with your parents, disappoint with your family, with your kids, with your husband or with your wife. Sometimes it can be hurt, but you have to let go all of those. If you never be able to let go, you won't be able to break through. You will grow mistrust or suspicious feeling. You close your heart. And it's really hard for you to receive the love of God. Envy and jealous to other people's life. Because you feel like you don't have enough. Because of the past relationship. Alright. So that's what consider as the past, uh, as the old, uh, the, the excess baggage. Now, why we need to leave the baggage first? Because it's overweight it's simple if you go to like you know if you travel with with airplane you go to the counter and then you always weight your bag right every single pound that you you know ex access from what the the capacity for the policy you know you have to pay the cost right it's because it's overweight it's up to you if you want to bring all of this, 
or start to open up your bag and then leave all the stuff that you do on it. So when I was in uh, school, when I was still uh, a student, my mom's, you know, she loves me so much and then she brought me like a lot of foods and put inside of my bags. I didn't know until I weighed my bag, I was like, oh, wait, 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 wait. It's more than the 50 pounds. It's more than the capacity that the, the islands give it to me. I can just be like, you know, pay or I can just open up and then take all the things that is not important. It's all up to you. All the overweight baggage, you can leave it or you have to pay for it. But let me tell you, if you pay for it, you know, can you imagine if you only be able to bring 50 pounds, but you try to bring, let's say 100 pounds, let's make this extreme. You try to like carry 100 pounds while you only can carry 50 pounds. What, hap what will happen? It will slow you down. Is it right? Maybe like the distance is the same. Maybe like say it's like 200 miles distance. But compared to the people who only buy, like, uh, bring like 50 pounds and versus people who bring the 100 pounds, which one is faster? People who are bringing 50 pounds, right? If you bring everything, you pay the cost, more energy and more time to reach destination. But you, if you leave the excess baggage, you don't have to pay, ex, pay extra costs. You like spend less energy and it's less time to reach the destination. Just like the Israelites. It's only take 14 days for them to enter the promised land from Egypt to the promised land is only 14 days, but it may God for some reason because they still bring their excess baggage, it takes them to enter the promised land for 40 years. It's the same distance, maybe, but the time, the arrival time is different. Do you want to have something like that? Of course not, right? Why we need to leave the excess package? First, because it's overweight. Let's open up together in Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30. Let's read this one together, okay? One, two, three. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. All right, until oh yeah, 30. God said that in the, I have like different translation. It says, are you tired, worn out? Burn out of religion, come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythm of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting Ill on you. Keep company with me and you learn to live freely and lightly. Sometimes we carry the burden, it's more than we can carry. What we need to do, God said, come to me. He will show you how to take a real rest and walk with me and work with me. He will teach you how to carry the burden that actually you need to carry, not the burden that you don't need to carry. Come to Christ. Second, why we need to learn to leave the excess baggage? Because all of the stuff, all of the stuffs, it's expired. Say with me, expired, expired. For example, you put all the foods that is perishable in the fridge, right? Uh, but at some point, you cannot store 
all of those in fridge, like, you know, there is an expired date, there is an expired time. There, it, there will be like a stage that the, the food, it will grow molds and it will be decayed, right? Same. We cannot um, keep all of the excess because, because it's already expired. What kind of expired stuff that have that is actually considered express, expired stuff? When we know all the expired stuff is perishable, it's actually something that is not from God. It's fear, shame, broken heart, loneliness, disappointment, bitterness. All of those is not from God and it will be perish. Open up in Matthew 6, verse 19. I will read it for you. Don't, do not lay up for yourself treasure on the earth, on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. So we know that all the treasures on earth, it's actually perishable. It can grow mold, and some it can rust, it can decay, and thieves break and in steal. So, if we keep all the bitterness, loneliness, shame in our fridge, what will happen? It will hurt yourself. The food, because it's grow mold and decay, it will hurt yourself. And not only that, it's also hurt all the food, contaminates all the foods in the same fridge, right? It's not in the different fridge. It's in the same fridge. It's going to hurt the other people. It's not only hurt yourself, but it can hurt your family. In, everyone who, who are in, the, in your circle. Your community. It's closer to your circle, not the other circle. Hebrew 12, verse 15, it says, Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause, tr cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. So we have to let go all of the expired stuff. Third, why we need to leave the access package? Because it's out of our storage. We don't have more room to keep all of those. So if you have um, an email and then your inbox is full, full of junk, you know, sp you know sometimes it's full of spam, right? Like all the ads and everything, you cannot Receive a new message if your inbox is full. Then what you should do? You have to delete all of the junk, all of the spam, all of the ads that's actually not important. So you can receive the, the new message. It's the same like when God wants to give you a new message, but your storage in your heart is full. Your, your uh, mindset is full. Can we receive it? No. It's hard, and it will go back. All the new message, it will be go back to the sender, to the God. And don't blame God if you said, if you pray to God, God, I want, I want you to speak to me. I want, uh, I want to listen to your voice. But we are so busy with our baggage, then we cannot hear what God said. That's because we are too busy. We we have a lot of junk in our heart, in our mind, so we can receive it. So, we have to clean it up because we are out of storage. Now, what we need to do, what we need to do to leave the access package, first, be vulnerable. 
Psalm 139, verse 1 to 2. Let us read this together. One, two, three. For the chief musicians of Psalm of David, O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. In the different translation, it says, God in face to get my life. Get all the facts firsthand. I'm an open book to you, even from a distance. You know what I'm thinking. We have to be vulnerable to ourselves and to God. Sometimes we don't want to admit it in our lives, right? You say to yourself, no, I'm okay. I'm not a lonely person. I don't have shame. I'm not a broken heart. But it's actually deep deep down inside our heart. We are that people. If we don't want to be vulnerable to ourselves and always do like self-denial, it's going to be really hard for God to clean up everything. We have to be vulnerable. Check your expired date. Sometimes, let's say, oh, maybe you have experienced that, oh, that people has hurt me for like five years ago. It's already expired, right? And you still carry it until here, until right now. You have to be vulnerable for yourself. You have to let go. Second, be humble. Open for God to prune your life, to clean up all the mess in our lives, and be humble to obey His plan. John 15, verse 1 to 2. I want to read this for you. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes. That is my bear, my bear more fruit. It says that every branch that in me that doesn't bear fruit, he takes away. So I believe that when God prunes everything in your life, it's not easy it's hurt but we have to be humble and let god do it for us amen and we want to be more fruitful in the next year we don't want to carry all of those baggage from 2018 back to 2019 the year of the new birth god has prepared something in store for us he wants us to be a better person. But if we carry all of those baggage, it's going to be hard for us because we spend more energies. Amen? Let's we stand up together. We thank you, Jesus, for your message this morning, Lord. One thing that we believe, Lord, there is nothing coincidence for everyone here to come to this place and listen to this message. This morning, Lord Jesus, we want to ask for forgiveness, Lord Jesus, if we still carry the access package, Lord, our broken heart. 
our disappointment, our fear, our shame, Lord. We know all of those already passed, but we still keep it in our storage, Lord. This morning, Lord, we want to surrender all of our baggage that is not important to our lives, that hinder us, Lord, to reach your goal, to reach your, your purpose in our lives, Lord. Help us, Jesus, to let go. It may not be easy for every one of us, Lord. But we believe, Lord, with the strength of the Lord, with the strength of Holy Spirit, that you will prune every single thing. We don't want Jesus to carry the heavy weight anymore. We don't want to carry the heavy weight. It's not from you. Something that is early things. We just want to carry the burden from you because we know, Lord, all the care is from you. It's it's not heavy lifting, Lord Jesus. We want to learn from you, Lord, this morning. How we need you, Holy Spirit. How we need your, your presence to come to restore us, to come to heal us this morning, Jesus. Your presence, Lord, yes. How I need your presence, Lord. Spirit of hope, Spirit of hope, draw me closer to you, Lord. Spirit. your hands this morning God wants you to surrender all of the sexes package you can't tell him personally what is your excess package you don't need to be shy because he is a good good father you can just tell him it's not gonna judge you it's not gonna condemn you it's God who loves you more than you know this morning just surrender all of the baggage to him 
all of those is already carried in the on the cross but why would we need to carry it again why want I just want to keep carried it back it's already done on the cross Holy Spirit you encounter every single people in this place reach Jesus their heart restore their heart heal their sickness heal their broken heart heal their shame heal their broken hearted we believe Lord Jesus we already surrender everything into your hands we thank you Jesus we thank you Lord your servant maybe stop to preach stop to speak but we believe the Holy Spirit will st- will continue to speak to them Lord we believe all of your messages or your word will never go back void Lord Jesus we thank you Lord we thank you we believe that you already heal us that you already restore us and we want to come you know enter the new year the year of the new birth with confidence we want to enter the new year Jesus with breakthrough from you we want to come to enter the new year with the love of God thank you Jesus thank you father for your words for your message this morning In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen.